Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the brand new Sony F55. Uh, this is their latest high resolution, uh, 4K, uh, high frame rate, multiple format camera. It's uh, the new F series of cameras. We're really impressed with from Sony. It's exciting to have the first uh, production model here in the office. We've seen some pre-production models over the last couple of months, but now we have a full shipping version of this camera. So I wanted to go through with you sort of the uh, ins and outs and the uh, functionality of the camera uh, from the outside in this video, and then we'll talk about the menus, etc. cetera, uh, in the next. Now, the F55 is sort of the bigger brother to the F5, uh, but they're really very much the same camera, at least as sort of aesthetically. So we'll talk about both cameras uh, in these videos. So let's start off with the, uh, the camera here, the 55, and talk about the differences between it and the 5. And the first thing you'll notice is that the 5 and the 55 have slightly different rings here. This is the main ring uh, that is called the FZ mount on the camera. And on the F55, this ring is silver, and off the, on the F5, it's black. Now, that's the only actual aesthetic difference between the two cameras. Just looking at it, you would not know the difference unless you saw that ring. So it's silver now, as you can see. So it is the 55. Uh, and this mount uh, does come off just like on the F3. It is a uh, sort of uh, universal mount system. I can actually loosen this guy up and remove the PL mount, as you see. Uh, the PL mount is an adapter. It does come with the camera in the box. Uh, and this PL mount uh, is actually much improved over the F3 mount. Uh, it's had a little bit more plastic in it. This is a lot more metal uh, throughout, so very strong. We like that a lot. And it does have both the Cook and Airy uh, pins in it still, so we can talk to uh, various lenses. And also, it will power the Cabrio uh, lens from Fujion if you have that. So very, very cool that way. So I can just put this on there like so, and I'm off. Now, you can, this also means with this FZ mount that we have here that we can use all the sort of lens adapters that were available for the F3, uh, that is the Nikon and Canon adapters, very easily, uh, very straightforward. So that's the uh, basic design of the mount. The sensor is 4K in resolution, 4096 across by 2160 tall, about a Super 35 sensor size, a little bit smaller than the F3, but certainly right up there with all the other uh, current sensors of today. Uh, and it does come with this PL adapter. Now, we also have in front of that sensor uh, some ND filters. If you look here on the side here, we have a clear ND, a 0.9, and a 1.8. So just those two filters uh, on there. But um, these are great features, the great things to have, especially considering that the base ISO of the 55 is 1,250. 1250 ISO is base, starting ISO, very high. And on the 5, it's 2,000 ISO. Uh, so really high speed. The reason there's a difference there is that the 55 has a global shutter, which gives you that, uh, grabs every part of the sensor at once, uh, and when it's capturing video, and then the 55, I mean the 5, has a, a rolling shutter, which captures sort of the image line by line. Uh, but this rolling shutter is very good, no different than most of the digital cinema cameras we see today. So they're both very usable, just a, a slight difference in there, and this is definitely some advantages to global shutter when you need it on the 55. So, we have the, uh, the lens adapters, the ND filters. And on the far side, you see all those buttons. So we have so many things going on down here, uh, including a, a simplified interface for working with the camera. This is uh, when it's powered up. It will show me the uh, white balance, your ISO, your shutter speeds, et cetera, et cetera, right there on the side. And you can kind of adjust those things very easily using these outside buttons. And that's all adjustable by this big scroll wheel here, which is a push button and scroll. So you move around the menus and this interface with that scroll wheel. Um, above that, we have three assignable buttons. These are just the buttons you can assign to do a variety of features, right? So turn on zebras, off zebras, etc. cetera. Um, you can also have a fourth button on the far side of the camera, fourth assignable. Basically, they can be set to whatever you want, right? Uh, and then we have a lock switch here, which is very important because you can imagine with this camera, here's a, the viewfinder here on the camera, which I'll talk about in a minute, but if I'm using that camera that way, my face could easily touch all these buttons. So the, the lock switch there is very important. Hit that, uh, and I can uh, lock out all that control while I'm not using it. Uh, below here, we have both uh, uh, a micro, uh, headphone jack, USB, and SD card. The headphone jack is kind of an odd place, but right angle seemed to take care of it for us. We tested that right away. Uh, finally, we have the S by S cards too. Very important, obviously. This camera, the F55, can record to all the SYS cards that we have out now uh, in regular formats, like 50 megabit 422 it can do, as well as the new XAVC video formats that it can take uh, up to high frame rates. Now, 
Uh, existing cards will work in HD and in 2K modes uh, through most frame rates. So even the Dash 1 cards can work up to 60p in HD. When you go above that, they have the Pro Plus cards that are brand new, which will give you the ability to go higher frame rate. Uh, higher frame rates coming in a future firmware, but eventually be able to do that. Uh, and also, uh, and the 55, those new Pro Plus cards can record in 4K XAVC, which is video, right? So 4K video internally in the 55. The 5 can't do that, but the 55 can record in that high, uh, that 4K internal mode right onto SYS card. So this is very impressive uh, and an important feature to have with, if you want that 4K right away in a video mode. Now, both the 5 and 55 can do raw, but we'll talk about that in one minute. Uh, S by S goes in here, recording lots of different flavors, etc. A and B uh, switch there to switch, switch between the two different cards. And above that, we have power on and off, just like that. So pretty straightforward. Uh, and, and right away, I'll just notice that the build of the camera, just, just as a side note, the build of the camera is quite nice, made of metal. There are, there are some plastic bits here and there uh, that, you know, are a little bit uh, more concerning. But for the most part, I feel like it's a much more solid camera than the previous generation. So we're very excited about that. Um, let's go around to the back of the camera now and look at this back piece here. Uh, this is sort of the uh, power accessory item that comes with the camera for mounting batteries. So this is an adapter that comes right with the camera, the 5 or the 55. Uh, and this adapter gives you a V-mount um, uh, V-mount lock for uh, existing V-mount batteries, or you can use the Olivine batteries that Sony, the new batteries they have for this camera. But any existing V-mount battery that's a 12 to 14 volt battery goes right there, no problem, you're powering the camera as normal. And on, beside that you have the XLR 4 pin input, and then two Hiroshi 1.8 amp 12 volt output uh, power. So this is accessory power ports, two of them. Now, uh, you don't have to use this power adapter if you don't want to. We can take it off. There's a little latching piece, two part system. Pull that off. Comes off. There you go. And now you see back here I have just an XLR 4 pin connector. There it is right there. Um, and the reason they have that set up is if, you don't want, if you're not using a battery, you can just plug directly in the back of the camera. And also, this is a place to mount other accessories, namely the uh, R5, the Sony uh, Axis R5 RAW recorder, right? This is a separate purchase from the 55 or the 5, but it goes on both. And it allows you to actually record raw data from the cameras, either one, in 4K, right? So I put that on there the same way, locks in nice and neat. And really, unlike a traditional raw recorder idea for a camera, this really is a, becomes part of the overall system. It's not designed to be a separate piece with its own menu structure. You hook it on and the camera talks to it and it records raw uh, seamlessly. So very nice feature there. Uh, and this, the back of this does have uh, the V-mount for batteries. And you're wondering what happened to the XLR as well. They move the XLR 12 volt to the side here. And, there, and one accessory power port as well. So you still have the basic functionality of this guy, which is the other piece I had on before, uh, but you no longer need it. You just put this guy on and you're off to, off to work uh, there. So that's the raw recorder piece. We'll talk about how to turn that on in the next uh, section. Uh, we come around the side here and we have multiple SDI outputs, right? So on both the 5 and the 55, I have these four SDI outputs and an HDMI. The SDIs are split into main and sub, right? Main outputs can give you 444 or 422 clean signals out in HD, right? Uh, the subs can also do uh, outputs, uh, various outputs, uh, in, uh, and, and, and have the ability to put overlays on that. So you could use these sub outputs for an HD overlay viewfinder or whatever you wanted on, on, uh, on screen there. So you could you know, have characters, etc., time code, whatever, on that if you wanted. And then finally, you have HDMI here for the same sort of purpose. Now, in the 55, I can actually adjust the menu uh, and change the settings in the camera to turn these four outputs into four uh, parts of a 4K signal. So I can actually output 4K live video out of the 55 by using all four connectors. Now, that means I'm running four cables to a 4K monitor. Sony has the X300 monitors, the new 4K monitor they have. You run those cables over. Ta-da, now you have 4K on a monitor, you know, one quadrant at a time. So it has the ability to do that, so it's very impressive that way. And you can actually do the same thing over HDMI. This is a 1.4 spec HDMI connection. So if you have a, if you have a TV that takes 4K in, 4K, a 4K TV, single cable, plug it in, voila, you have uh, 4K. Also interesting here, just as a side note, 
because you can send four SDIs out in 4K, a recorder like the Key Pro Quad could actually take that video in and record uh, ProRes 4K. If you had a Key Pro Quad, quad back here, you could, you could actually use all these ports for 4K video if you so choose. Okay, so SDI outputs. Next we have this first module here, and I call it a module because it is removable. This is sort of the timecode genlock module. You have timecode in or out with a little switch between the two. Genlock, shutter, and a test output. Test output is basically just an analog Y signal output. Uh, so you get this nice thing. And then we have the audio module here as well, which can take uh, two XLRs and analog input, or uh, which is two channels of audio, analog, or you can put it to AES EBU mode up top here and you have yourself uh, four channels of digital audio if your mixer can output that. So nice feature there. We also have on the side of it, you have a switch here for uh, mic and line level adjustments, uh, phantom power on and off, etc. So little switches there, set that up. It's a nice thing, a uh, little module. You can remove it also. If you do, you just lose all the audio functionality altogether. Um, the audio level adjustment, there's none on the outside of the camera right now, so you can't. There's no level, way to, do, to adjust the levels of audio unless you go into the menus of the camera. Eventually, on the side of the camera, the, the far side here, the dummy side, you will be able to have, or the, the operator side, I should say, you will be able to have a, uh, a level adjustment in that with that timecode audio button. But right, not right now. So, like every camera today, firmware changes. There's updates all the time. So you'll see throughout this year. Sony adding more and more functionality through, through uh, free firmware upgrades. So nice, th nice thing there to note though up front. Next up we have the viewfinder port. This is the viewfinder hookup for this viewfinder which I'll talk about in one minute. Be aware this connector does stick out. You may look for future hardware upgrade, you know, little add-on pieces that can protect this, uh, and, and this connector. But you know, it is sticking out a little bit so just be aware when you first operate this camera that you could damage it. Um, next up is this little door here, and if I, slow, I can kind of release it there, which underneath has another USB plug, right? Uh, you can do this um, and put in a little USB uh, Wi-Fi adapter. It's a nice option to have. With that little Wi-Fi adapter, you can actually control the camera via an iPad with the whole interface. Now, that's not yet available either. This, it doesn't work just yet. For future firmware, we will have the ability to actually control the camera, the full menus, etc with a Wi-Fi controller there. So uh, just stay, stay tuned for that as well. That's where it goes. That little Wi-Fi adapter is available now. Put it in, right? And then last but certainly not least is the viewfinder here. This is the uh, Sony OLED viewfinder. It's a 1280 by 720p uh, OLED screen. Really amazing to look at. I mean, this is outstanding. Definitely one of the best ones I've ever seen. Uh, and uh, it's just a, a high contrast, easy to focus with viewfinder. I really like it a lot. There is the LCD version also, which is also very nice, 960 by 540 resolution, but you can pick it up and look at it without looking through the viewfinder port itself. So it sort of acts as a mini monitor as well. I like both different reasons. So there it is. And this comes with this little bracket, by the way. This bracket comes with the viewfinder where uh, the, the camera comes with this top handle and the bracket to, and the little lock mechanism for the, uh, for the viewfinder. So this, this piece comes in the camera. This is a separate piece. Um, the handle itself has a nice uh, range of, of screw holes, uh, quarter 20, 3 and 16 Right there on top, it's very solid, it's metal. And the top of the camera also has lots of screw holes, and it is, uh, you went right into the body of the camera, so it is strong. Uh, there's lots of people coming out with uh, cheese plates or accessory plates for the top here, which will be very important, no doubt, to add on, and I like that option. And then, of course, the bottom, you see the same sort of line of screw holes there. Uh, quarter 23, 8 sixteenths, et cetera. Uh, there you go for that. And last but not least, of course, uh, I have this little adapter as well here, uh, which, it, which allows me to uh, adapt from uh, the V-Lock here to Anton Bauer if you want to. This is, a, this is one from IDX. We have other ones from Switron and this is one from Switronics. We have other ones as well that do more things. Uh, this allows you to uh, put an Anton Bauer on the back, no problem. Uh, and work with this camera just fine. So, I mean, this is a full-featured camera system. Uh, the F Fit 5 is just, just the same in every way that I just described. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can do so much with it. So, I like it. It's a well-designed system. Puts your shoulder nice, uh, nice and neat, especially with the pad, of course. And the viewfinder's in the right spot. Uh, go figure. So, very important stuff uh, there. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.